So, guys, I went camping over the weekend. Okay. It was absolutely awesome. I love camping. We slept on top of a mountain top. How was uh, sleeping on top of a mountain? It was not great. It was do, bad. Do you know? There was like 30 degree winds, or I'm sorry, 30 mile per hour winds like all night. Like it, we were good for like until like 2 a.m. And then, uh, and we also were drinking f- fairly heavily. So I was like, my plan was like, oh, like I'll just kind of be in like a nice pass out state and wake up the next morning totally refreshed. But, These uh, are all things homeless <laughs> people do. <laughs> like, and I just want to say, Stephen, as the as Noah's boss, he left work early to do this. Oh, he, he keeps Noah, the life of a homeless person. Surely, surely, on top of this mountain, yeah. there were a lot of trees to break up the wind. That's not true. That's oh, not no. true, James. Oh no! So, wait, so you're how far away were the trees that yeah. could break up the wind? Very far away, how like far? a half a mile oh, no. away. Oh, well, but surely you brought a bunch of wood to do things like a campfire to okay. keep you warm. Don't spoon food me my own stories, James. I don't wind, like this. The wind might blow out the fire, though. <laughs> and that's exactly right. That, and so we couldn't get a fire lit, and it was kind of miserable. And, like, all the food that I brought was supposed to be, like, cooked over a fire, and we could not get this fire lit. And it was really terrible. And, like, I don't know. I... I also love my buddies, but like it's like I I had asked them repeatedly to like help me gather firewood, and they like come back with like two sticks. They walk a half mile into the woods to go get literally two sticks, like with their fingers, and then they come back and like they're like I got the wood. They Mario. ended up having to cook hot dogs over bic lighters. <laughs> That's not true. I got the fire to start. Did you, did you have to get a metal trash? It's not. Can? No, it's not. It's not true. They cooked hamburgers that way. <laughs> After all, after sleeping on the side of a mountain, yeah. like a homeless person, yeah. passed with alcohol, yeah. waiting to die, like <laughs> hypothermia, like I can't if as enough happens to homeless people. It does. That does happen. And you're, you're so up to do it again. Oh my god, I loved it. It was great. Whoops, you can just sit on the tent on the park and just save all that money. I live in Piedmont Park. <laughs> yeah, that's like, Noah. He's, he's the marketing movie. director. He lives in Piedmont Park. Like, like, yeah, but it's like a decision. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, you have to commit to it. It's just like a thing he does. It's a little It's a little weird. It's, like a, oh my it's god. like a quirk. But, but, but don't money. worry, he doesn't actually do anything with your documents. <laughs> yes, he does not. He's yeah. not a lawyer. He is. Yeah. He's not going to appear in court for you. I love Honestly, that. if you're if you're if you're a lawyer is homeless, you are going to jail. <laughs> like, Even like... if it's a civil case. Yes. All right, hey, Noah, do you know what time it is? What time is it, Stephen? It is time to talk about death and taxes. Guys, welcome to Let's Talk About Death and Taxes. Uh, on this show, we talk about the two things that Benny Franklin said were inevitable in life, death and taxes. My name is Noah Chrysler. I don't know anything about most things. Um, and this are my two good, no, I was going to say friends, but your colleagues, this right? This are? This are? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, 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 this I, are? I didn't even get past that. I, I don't know yeah, much yeah. about grammar. This are my two friends. I don't talk too good, but I, I knows how to host a podcast. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Let's climb on into the legal zone, boys. That's, That's great. Oh. So my name is James Champlin, <laughs> and I'm an attorney, and I want to stop this now and move on. <laughs> Thank Sounds you. good, yeah. My name is Steven Schreiber. I'm also an attorney. I used to be... I taught high school English before I was a lawyer, and a little part of me is <laughs> dead inside. <laughs> it's, it's really bad that I didn't pick up on this R as being like a cardinal sin. That's really terrible. It's, or, it's among them, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yep. Murder. Yep. This R. Yep. This yep. R. Boy, this felt flat. It, and no, on. it was a solid you, joke. You I lost just, your list of I thought crimes. you were gonna. I thought you were gonna yeah. really have like a solid like punchline one at the end. Yeah. But nope. But you're working towards something. Sometimes the best punchline is one you expect, <laughs> but doesn't show up. Nice. It's like Seinfeld. If George makes a line, you have to leave. <laughs> you, but you missed your high point. <laughs> it's like, uh-huh. I love George, man. I've been described as George Costanza. Um, guys, if you th- this is not a, an advice show because that would be bad if you saw a show and you were like, oh, that's official legal advice. Um, this is more of like a lot. This is more of an entertainment thing. Legal information and entertainment. Yeah, exactly. Um, if you would like a real some some real advice, uh, give us a call 404-939-7562 or send us an email info at modernestateplanning.com. Um, we'd love to help you. We're, we're an estate planning law firm, so we'd love to help you plan your will, estate. Yeah, anything. Yeah, anything regarding wills, trust, um, protecting people, bird law. Bird law. bird law. And I dabble in bird law. <laughs> Milk steak. Avian law or whatever. <laughs> or, or, yeah. 
<laughs> it's like if, a, if some sort of migration of birds is impacting your property right? We yeah. will sue those birds. Sue them. <laughs> I will go out there and I will serve those birds. <laughs> <laughs> Old man served. yells at You've Sky. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. I love It's Always Sunny. That show's the best. Um, this episode is also going to be a little bit different. We are mainly going to talk about objections uh, to, to hey, I don't, I don't need an estate plan. I don't need one of those things. Like, that sounds expensive and stupid. Why would I ever? I'll, when I die, I, I'm not going to be around for it. Like, this isn't my problem to deal with. It's going to be my inheritor's problems, right? We're going to deal with those. One of the most common objections that I think we hear is that estate planning is too expensive um, and that people don't see the, you know, they look at the price tag. It's like, that's too much. Um, so what would you say to that? So I guess the first part is how much does it cost to, what's the value to you of like looking at your kids or looking at your spouse and telling them that I don't have a plan because I don't want to pay for it. But in a more cynical, less outright legal way, um, dying without an estate plan and having an actual fight over the estates, at least literally just filing stuff with the court um, is more expensive than the most basic estate plan we sell. Um, and even the most expensive plan I sell so, is still cheaper than a heated probate litigation where I've charged 20, 30, 40,000 over the course of like a couple of years. And no one um, that really benefited other than me and probably the other attorneys. Right. So the if, family kind of got screwed. They have yeah, to pay this if your giant goal bill. is not to pay a lawyer a lot of money. Yeah. Um, you can, whatever that is, take care of at the front end. Um, so I think I think the one of the most interesting parts of that is you know the base package is going to be cheaper than like doing just like basically doing the documents. Even like the most the even the, the average package is like the packages that ninety five percent of my clients pay or or every one of them is cheaper than a litigated probate case. Yeah. Yeah. And and another thing that you get from that is you know when there is not something in place or when something's in place that doesn't work you wind up spending a lot more time or your family members wind up spending a lot more time after you die trying to get this sorted out so mm -hmm. it's going to wind up costing them a lot of money and also a lot of effort when they should be um kind of grieving you that's going to be their last and, and moving on that's going to be their last memory of you is going into the courthouse to deal with a bunch of stuff because for whatever reason it didn't get taken care of earlier mm -hmm. so whatever it costs I mean, honestly, for our firm, our firm individual, we have payment plans, lots of other structures to make it work for most people. Mm -hmm. But it's always more expensive than doing nothing. Yeah. Doing nothing has its own cost um, of its own. So yeah. you just don't feel those now. Yeah. yeah. Penny it's, wise, it's pound something foolish. Where you know, you a lot of people look at it as a cost when in reality it's an investment. Yeah. You're you're paying this money now to avoid all the expense and the headache and the heartache down the road. And you know you'll, you, just one of a few things where like you have insurance, you don't know if the house will catch on fire, you don't know if you'll have a car accident. But with an estate plan, barring extremely unforeseen circumstances like be, literally being Jesus or something, <laughs> you will probably no, no, die. He, he died. And, he, and then he, came, <laughs> then he went back up, that's true. He came back from the dead and then died again. Yeah, yeah. he died twice. So. <laughs> He needed two estate plans. <laughs> right. Okay. But anyway, that, that that whole point though, you will you will use this. It will be a thing that gets used. Right. Right. Um, for better or worse, and so you better have. It's better to have a plan now yeah. than to let someone else impose their plan on you later. I do think though that that's a very interesting point from just a from a. I mean, taking all the emotional context out of it, like you know, even just from a financial standpoint, like it makes financial sense to do this. Like, yeah, it's not mm -hmm. cheap, but like it's going to be one of the most competitive options for getting this to happen, right? Yes, Distributing things. Yeah. By far, uh, and I would much rather, it is much easier for me to plan your estate to do your probate litigation. I hate your probate litigation mm -hmm. because there's no way that you'll come out of it with your family in the same position as they were before. Right. Everybody's oh. going to hate each other, pretty much. Or yeah, exactly. Maybe not. Maybe not hate each other. We've but had like, mediation. It's be like James was talking about, we were yeah. literally someone died, and their children were screaming at each other, screaming over, and that's something and that we could all have those avoided. Little underlying things that were always below the surface, maybe didn't present. You know, I mean, we've we've had clients who say like, we have never had a problem in life. Like we, until, we never had a problem until this came up, until the and now died, usually, all like, this was stuff the is coming to the surface. That's wild, and it's and it's it's really sad. Cool. Yeah, yeah, but pl plan now. So 
it's, Steven, it's, that's too expensive. What one line summary of a response to that? It's too expensive to not plan. Sweet. Cool. Then we fade to black and there's a call to action. <laughs> I so I really like the um sorry, this is like You're good. non You're fine. This is outside let's, of the let's podcast. Talk right? No, I mean I was so, gonna include it. <laughs> <laughs> you Steven, see how I like the spot where you're like, you don't know if you're going to use insurance, but you know you're going to use your estate plan. Yeah. I, I, dig a I think like we Jesus. need to get <laughs> yeah. one on the books where like you get through that quickly yeah. yes. without the like sidetrack. Just like yeah. get without that Jesus. out there. That's <laughs> yeah. a great, it's like, that's a really good my, sidetrack. Like, yeah. no, that's is, a really good great. one. Good, so. yeah. Um, yeah, cool. Um, no, yeah. and we've got we've got seven more opportunities to do that. Yeah. Um, cool. Okay, I'm gonna keep once again like my um, Trump thing from last week. I'm gonna not land it successfully the next time. <laughs> yeah. So we're gonna we're gonna wait and we're gonna get you warmed up again. And I'm gonna be like, hey, Steve, what was the thing you said about insurance? <laughs> and I'll be like, blah 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 blah. Like, Fuck! I had it. I was in my grasp. I, I don't even remember it. what it was last week. I was like, week. Trump yeah. and I have the same amount of the same chance of being president in yeah. January. Yeah. And I yeah, had it. Really I had funny. it in my hands. Oh, it was so yeah. funny. Yeah. I even liked I thought the fumble was funnier than even the line. Just like <laughs> yeah. just like, oh man, the idea of oh I built this up. Okay. Um cool. Uh, cool. Another objection that we hear, you know, is like, hey, like, I'm already married. I don't think I need something like this, you know. So so what would you say to somebody who's married and doesn't think they need an estate plan? So the first thing I do is make sure you don't need it. So at least talk with an attorney and make an informed decision. So it's not my job to – I'm not going to force you to make a plan that you don't think you'll need. Right. But I want to make sure that you're clear on what the implications of not planning are. I mean, you might be perfectly happy – with the outcome of that, but I want you to come at that with all the data to make that decision. Because if kind of one of those things are, if you don't make a decision to control your life, your legacy, your destiny, your family, as far as how you leave stuff to them, someone else will, and um, they will not get. They will. They will take the chance to do that. Who Who could that someone else be? That can be the state. That can be your family. That could be someone who happens to get themselves added to your account as like a whatever power attorney agent just, or j it could literally be anyone without a game plan and you kind of leave yourself at the mercy of and leave everything that you worked for at the legacy of other people right um and hopefully you trust with other people if you're if you're perfectly happy with your spouse and you have nothing else going on just know that if you die and your spe and you leave everything to your spouse then your spouse gets remarried that second spouse might get everything you worked for Ho so hopefully you're, ha you're fine with that outcome. Or right. if, but if not, we can build safeguards for it or anything else. If you're, if you're happy with both the initial effects and the secondary effects of your decisions mm -hmm. or your lack of decisions, then great. And if you aren't, we can help you with a plan. Yeah. No, it makes sense. Um, cool. So one sentence summary to, I don't think I need it. Uh, um, what would you respond with? Are you sure? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's perfect. Yeah. I would say, yeah. yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. Cool. Sweet. Let's go on to the next one, shall we? Here cool. we go. Um, cool. Another objection we hear. Um, you know, I could easily do this with a competitor. I could go onto an online service and be like maybe two hundred bucks, and, and it could, you know, I could easily get this done like super cheap, super quick. Um, why should I not do that? I mean, why so, why go with you? This is going to take a while. Like it's mm -hmm. well, so mm -hmm. some of those might work for very basic plans, very basic estates, because a lot of them it is state specific, which is which is good, but. At the end of the day, you know, how much are you going to trust that the software got it right without the end product being reviewed by somebody who really knows what they're doing? And if something does come up where you need to make a change or there's an issue, how well is it going to actually fix it? Yeah. Um, another big question is if, if you want to do something that's not within the parameters of the software – how much flexibility is really going to do with that software? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and something to think about with that is if the software does make a mistake and it doesn't do what you want it to do or it doesn't work, you're never going to find out Yeah, because you'll be dead yep. and the people that are going to have to deal with it is going to be your family. Exactly. And as far as dealing with other lawyers, I mean, I'm my goal is I want you to work with someone you're happy working with. Um, having said that, I don't recommend you work with someone who does dabbles in estate plans, who does like DUIs in the morning and threw together your will or did your immigration paperwork and threw together your will. Because I see that a lot. And yeah. Uh, yeah. I want them to have some 
confidence that they that you feel that you can trust them to have your best interest and know all of your legal options. So yeah, so can you if, speak to that for a second? Yeah. So like you know, our firm specializes in estate planning. Yes. right. That's what we do, I do every day. I do, I do all I do are wills, trust estates, anything related to estate planning and probate. I see how things go wrong when you don't plan. I see how things go right when you do plan. I get thank you notes from clients, children being like, thank you for getting this together for my parents because this was so easy. I did not have to step inside the courthouse and stuff like that. Um, yeah. Which, I mean, I mean, if you go to somebody who's like a general practice attorney. Who, who the like heck does, knows what they know. Right. Um, I, I, say that, I say that seriously. Like I spend money on the infrastructure, the CLEs, the da- I mean, the, the continuing education, the data to know what's going on in my very narrow world of estate planning. Yep. I don't know how to fix a traffic ticket. I don't know how to get you out of jail. I don't know how to fix your election claim or whatever. <laughs> um, but I do know this. I do, I do know this estate thing really, really well. And I can off the top of my head, I know more than most attorneys who don't specialize in it. Just. Yeah, and just to just to add some of my but you personal, get what you, you know, and that's the kind of thing you get what you pay for, and the, your mileage may vary. But right um. to add some of my personal experience, I saw a will that was drawn up by a lawyer that my like parents had hired um, to write a will, mm-hmm. and like it was so like, I, and I'm familiar with the documents that you create and prepare for people, and like it's just like very, 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 very thorough, like really well created. And this thing that this lawyer showed my parents is like two pages long and like really vague. And like, it was a mess and it was like, it was shocking to me. It was shocking to me, yeah. the difference. And yeah. And everything I do is driven by an, a level of paranoia for my clients that they don't have for themselves, nor should they have. We try to foresee all the things that could go wrong and prevent them from going wrong so that they don't go wrong mm-hmm. in some, because some weird paragraph that they hadn't thought about said something that created this like 10 other legal issues yeah so yeah. cool and i'm okay. not sure if you're um someone either the inner either the website or your person who's dabbling in it can do that for you yeah so whatever but having said that work with someone you're happy with if you if you yeah. meet me and you're like not for me mm-hmm. that it won't That's hurt fine. my feelings i want people who are excited to work with us yeah. but at least work with yeah. work with someone who knows what they're doing well cool. and i think so much of the attorney client relationship is built on on trust and on that connection yeah so that's exactly very important. yeah so cool one sentence summary to someone who says you know i can do this cheaper online by myself what do you that, say and for that you get what you pay for cool You're- <laughs> sweet love it um what a great clip very curt very like I like that. It's like we're positioning ourselves as like we got options. You know, we're out here. We can we can go get anybody to call us anytime. I'm like, no longer <laughs> desperate. If you asked me this like six years ago, I'd be like, hire please me. hire me. I'll make you like me. I'll change. I'll change. Exactly. But no, it's like no, like genuinely going to help you, and like you can do it whatever you want. Doesn't help in any environment. Yeah. No. Exactly. Um, cool. Um, all right. James mentioned this one. Um. And just to prepare a little bit, because I know this might not be one of the like more readily available ones that we hear. Um, I need a larger firm, or I need like a more well-known firm to do this. Um, James mentioned that. So, do you have like a response to that? We'll and we'll do it formally. We'll formally introduce it in a second or two. Um, but you guys got a response ready to go? Sure. Sweet. Yeah. Um, cool. Um, cool. Another objection that we've heard in the past is that, you know, who are you guys? Like, you know, I, I haven't heard much about you, you know, why not go with like a bigger, larger firm that does more things? You know, they have this menu of other stuff that they do. Why not go with one of those people? Do you want a big firm or do you want a relationship with your lawyer? Um, so I've, I'm familiar with big firms. I mean, I've worked at big firms, both big firms that do, that are low end and big firms that are very, very high end and expensive. Um, in most of those cases, you will probably not get a relationship with your attorney. You'll get a relationship with their legal assistant or their support staff or someone else, and, and which is fine. But those firms have high turnover. You won't get the. You won't be even working with the same lawyer any likely in the next five years. Um, when you work with a smaller state firm, our firm in particular, um, this is this is it for me. This I'm, I'm in. <laughs> this, is, this is this is the last job I'm gonna have <laughs> as, yeah. a, as a lawyer, and um, so you will be able to find me. Um, you have people have my direct dials. People have our staff dials, and you can find me and work with me every year. I try to call you as much as I can and um, get a real understanding of what makes you tick. Um, 
And also, we're in a cool building. We have a lot of cool things. If, if you're looking for us the experience of a big firm, we have the experience of a big firm. Right. And I have a big, I have a Duke degree and all those things that you'll get at a big firm. So right. you'll have, you're going to get the brain of a big law firm, except you might like like the people better. This might be a bad metaphor, and we can cut this out if you want to, Steven. <laughs> but uh, one of my favorite shows is The Office, right? And on The Office, like they talk about like like the one thing that keeps them in business, right? Like they compete with Staples, right? And Staples is, you know, it's Staples, right? Yeah. It, it's paper. Paper is a commodity that everybody mm-hmm. needs. And so, but they say, you know, the one area where they like really excel, and I'm not saying that's the one area in which we excel, because we excel in many areas. Um, but like they have great... <laughs> Great customer service, right? And they're a small company that can develop like really like strong relationships with other people. And I yeah. think that that's like a cool uh, thing, like you know, like because that's real. Like you know, when you, when it's a small company that like uh, specializes in one specific area, like delivering paper or estate planning, then you have you know people who really care and really know their stuff. Versus a Staples, where it's like, yeah, we know about printers yeah. and We're paper a- and staplers yeah. and. In- Post it. Yeah. And honestly, <laughs> in big firms, like estate planning is like a department, and somebody's not even a name department. Somebody's like a sub part of the tax department. Mm-hmm. You're like in the corner of the hallway of the least important mm-hmm. part of the firm. Um, you're talking to the firm. Like, you get to know the owner of the firm or the shareholders and stuff like that. I mean, you aren't going to be hot. You aren't going to be like going through 10 layers of red tape to deal with that. So, you know the people. You know, I don't know if you need if questions. People email me all the time with, Right. stuff that comes up in their lives. I know the names of your kids and your dog and whatever you need to, that's yeah. important to you. And I think the other thing too is you have to look at what are you going to the attorney for? So I think there are people out there where their assets and their schemes are so complicated that they they need a, a, a firm they might need a, they might need a boutique or all a these firm. different compartments, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, I have friends who work in firms like that, but but these are people who are spending two hundred grand a year on legal fees just to manage their. And estate. honestly, in those kind of um, firms, the state plan is like an add-on. Yes, throwing it's like an afterthought. Right. It's more about managing corporations, doing all this other stuff. So I if think you, if you don't own a Fortune five hundred company or right. something, if, if yeah. your if your net worth is not you know in the eight digits, you know. Um, we can help you if they are. I mean, having said that, I can, obviously I can we can you. help you if they are. Um, but, <laughs> but I'm not going to do your but, corporate. But what I'm getting at is, you know, for, for 99% of people, what you need is someone that can do the job that you're hiring them for. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, all the other stuff is just, it's just trappings. It's just name brand. It's just, it doesn't affect the substance. Right. Cool. Okay. Um, one sentence response to, hey, I, I think I need a larger firm. I don't know who you guys are. Get to know us. Yes, we're likable. <laughs> yeah, no. Let's no. make one that doesn't sound so sad. <laughs> I said it. I was like, "Fuck, that sounds bad." All right, cool. Um, Let's say it one more, that one more time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if you guys had to respond, you know, to a one sentence, one sentence response to, um, you know, hey, I think I need a larger firm. I don't know who you guys are. What would you respond with? Do you want to hire a firm or do you want to hire a lawyer? Cool. Oh, yeah. Sweet. I, Exactly. We're the best. So. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Um, cool. Okay, great. Um, I'm sorry about the Staples allegory. That was, I feel like that was a oh, tangent. No, that was good. Okay. <laughs> there, is, there is like a, in law firm world, so there is like obviously the big national firm, well, not, well multi office firms that have like like the super large ones that do have a state playing that's like an after effort with rich people. There are also like the low end ones, like the almost like the legal shield versions of it. Yeah. There's one firm in like Gwinnett that does like a thousand different practice areas as part of like the legal shield thing mm-hmm. where you get to talk to a lawyer for like five minutes who churns out a will for you. Um, wow. And, but it's through both sides of it. And I honestly think you should know your lawyer. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I, I know your. I mean, I know my clients like details. So if some they were to die, their kids call me. And they I, they know who I am already. Right. We talked about this a little while ago. Or I mean, I, I don't know how much we've talked about this, but like the app that I was building in California, like it was like it was like the fastest mobile app that would generate a a will, and like the will that it would generate was absolutely awful. Like the and like fastest. Yeah, it was the fastest like mobile app that could make a will because like it was like a survey, and then it would spit oh out this God. document. So oh, is this is one of those areas where I don't know. What speed <laughs> is. Yeah, <laughs> not good. It's, it's, on a, it's on a list of things where right. speed is not a preferred. It's like it's like the <laughs> fastest marriage license you could ever get. Like yeah, it's, it's a like terrible you're in Vegas. You're yeah, right. At, it's, right, it's right at the bar. Right. <laughs> you, you can literally you can get married right before you sober. But up. like we, you know, I mean, we yeah. were we were not 
that's why it's i think it's great to do try to like try to do audacious things when you're like you oh, know no, no. in your early 20s because then it's like you learned a lot about what you don't know and you get informed very very quickly I, and I, wouldn't, I don't oppose legal zoom or those things but yeah. it's like a you just have to know what you're what you're in it for yeah right. we right. were developing an app called Afterbox, um but we never released it so nobody has one of our honestly janky i wills, do want an Afterbox <laughs> that contains my like my dvd or my my video like with my random thoughts so that people my... can go back to my well of wisdom yeah. for generations. My afterbox will just be like cardboard and full of my loose cremains. <laughs> cremains. Well, it was, it's a digital. It's a digital <laughs> For some reason, it's not, like your, after your, not your afterbox. It's like you've mixed your ashes with cranberries. <laughs> <laughs> like a bog? Like a, yeah. like, I want to be spread into a bog. Interesting. Weird. Very like weird. Very like weird the, and specific. Yeah. Um, Still great. Okay. Um, great. Next objection. Um, I need a larger firm. Um, cool. Next one is I don't need one right now. Um, cool. You ready? Here we go. Yeah. Bacon yeah. on that response. Cool. Um, one of the most common objections we hear, you know, is that people don't think that this should be a priority right now, right? Like I'm going to, I'm going to do this, but just like, I'll do it eventually. Like give me a month or something and I'll, and I'll come back to you. Um, why do you think that is not the greatest mindset out there? So... One thing that um, <laughs> sorry, sorry, can you sorry, 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 yeah. No, I, I literally, so I literally was gonna burp. I was trying to suppress a burp immediately after opening my mouth, and I was like, You're "God, fine. please let me start to answer with a burp." You're fine. Cuts in now. In a couple moments. From okay. Now. Okay. Now, can we, can you when you start up? to speak, or do you want me to re serve you up again? Yeah, serve me up again. Okay. Um. So one thing that I think we hear from people from time to time is that uh, you know, this is not a priority for them right now, right? They it's something that they'll put on the back burner. They'll get to it in a month from now. Um. And then what end up, you know, eventually they they forget to do it. Um. But you know, they just they don't make it a priority right now though. So what would you say to people like that? So. You don't know what you don't know. So in that sense, you don't know how long we're gonna live. Um. We have done estates, literally probated wills and done stuff for people who are in their 70s and 80s. And then we've had estates where people were in their 20s, 30s and died unexpectedly. I think it is, I know it's a little bit scary to think about your death. And that's one of the reasons why people deprioritize it. Um, but once you get through that and deal with the fact that this is an inevitability, and more importantly, there are people in your life that you care about. A lot of times with clients, people are dependent on you, like spouses, children, anyone who lives in your household or anything like that, that you need to protect. Um, so it's my, it's one thing that I implore people to do is to move this up your priority list. Um, get this done to make sure those people are taken care of and so that you can then go back to doing all the more fun things. Yeah. I think I think uh, one one interesting conversation that we had that I think uh, you know changed a little bit of the way I think about this. You know, we have in our office we have a wall of people who we contacted who we like haven't yet purchased an estate plan from us. Mm -hmm. And we were talking about, you know, hey, it's our personal responsibility to make sure each one of the people on this wall like has their stuff together, right? Yes. Like because they don't view it as a priority. They don't realize that this is like terrible nightmare situation is is following them. Um, can you speak to that a little yeah. bit so we yeah so is my thinking as well that like when people contact us who are kicking the tires on the estate plan they know it's important um it's my job just as, both as an attorney who has ethical obligations to people who talk with me and as a human being who is generally nice and cares about other people that i want you to have all the information you need to make a decision whether you want to protect your family or whether you don't or leave it to chance um and so it's my, I want to make sure you have that information, you come informed and know that this death is not just a possibility, it's like 100% possibility. You are guaranteed to need your estate plan at some point. Um, and you're also guaranteed to, if you don't have an estate plan, that it will it will go through a court, it will create issues, potential, if your family doesn't get along. Um, and that will be something that will always just be attached to your legacy. Right. And you can avoid that. Yes. So, yeah, it's our responsibility to help you realize that you need this and, like, it's you should make it a priority. Take the time to make it a priority. Yes, I, I promise it's not that hard. 
Um, we do the hard work. Um, right. You, we just learn. We just learn about you. Yeah. We meet you. We learn about you. We get. We learn about what you want to do, and we get it done. On so all you have to do is review it with us and make sure it gets signed, and we'll help you get it set up and make it work. Cool. Sweet. This was kind of depressing. Yeah, I'm a no, real, <laughs> very serious. <laughs> yeah. oh, no. Very different tone. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we have a great team, and I don't oh, know. If nothing else, you get to meet us. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Get to hang out. We're fun. <laughs> We're fun lawyers. Um, guys, thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this, let us know. This episode is a little bit different than any other of our other stuff, so post a comment. We want to hear your thoughts. Um, yeah, if you go ahead and give us a five-star review on iTunes or whatever podcasting app you're listening on, because we're probably there. Um, Anchor is the best, man. It just uploads to everything. It's cool. Let, do that. That. Um, if you want legal representation, info at modernestateplanning.com or, you know, an estate plan, done, not legal representation. I mean, we'd offer legal that too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. We're, we're love lawyers. To make it. We're real lawyers. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a bar card. This is my wallet. Yeah. <laughs> I play one on TV and in, in real states. life. Yeah. 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 Um, cool. Guys, thanks so much for watching. Have a great day.